the world number one has indicated that he may hold talks with Federer later this week concerning the recent decision to change the CEO of the ATP. Novak Djokovic, photo by Chrysleen Kayo, copyright at Sport Vision. After being placed in the political spotlight throughout Indian Wells, Novak Djokovic is keen to focus solely on tennis during the Miami Open. Djokovic, who is the head of the ATP Players' Council, has been under scrutiny since the decision to remove Chris Kermode from his position as CEO of men's tennis later this year. It has been reported that the council narrowly voted in favor of removing Kermode and passed their verdict on to the players' representatives, who had the final say on the matter. However, Djokovic has remained neutral on the subject and the details of that vote has been kept secret. Paving way for mass speculation on Djokovic's motives and role in the matter. To complicate the situation further, both Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal have backed Kermode, who is overseeing a record growth in men's tennis during his tenure. Both have also said that they were not consulted by the council over the issue. I tried to meet Novak on the deadline. Unfortunately he had no time. That's hard to understand for me. He suggested that we see each other the day after, but everything was already decided, Federer told the Swiss press during the BNP Paribas Open. We have not met yet. I'm already interested in what's behind it, why it happened like that. I have to think about whether I should get more involved again in the future, for the sake of the tour, or if I should just get involved a bit without going through politics." 11-time French Open champion Nadal has also repeatedly echoed similar comments since the Australian Open, warning that the removal of Kermode could stop the process of improving our sport. Nadal has also criticized the council's management of the issue. I am disappointed that nobody came and explained why, what's the real reason of we don't have Chris Kermode continuing running our sport. He said, if a lot of players says this that they weren't consulted, probably the guys who are running the council, they didn't make the right job, because they are there representing us, so. Normally they have to ask what's our opinion. Amid the fallout between some of the biggest names of the sport, Djokovic has played down speculation that there is friction between the trio. Both Djokovic and Federer were present during the official opening ceremony of the new venue at the Miami Open. Embed from Getty Images following the ceremony, Djokovic appealed to the media to not create any tension between him and others. The 31-year-old remains coy about his opinion concerning Kermode's removal. Although he has previously called for changes to be made to the structure of the ATP, I saw Roger today, Wednesday, we were in the opening ceremony cutting the ribbon on center court, Reuters quoted Djokovic is saying during his pre-tournament press conference. We had a small chat there was no time to talk about the political stuff. That is hopefully something we will have time in the next few days to go through. It's not necessary for you guys to create any tensions between us. In contrary I have a very good relations with both of them. There are two sides to the argument. Some say the reigning Australian Open champion should have made a better effort to consult with his rivals on the tour. On the other hand, it can be argued that both Federer and Nadal should have been more proactive in trying to meet with the council. Responding to Djokovic, Federer has kept an open mind about any potential meeting between the two this week. saying, if it happens, it happens, Nadal is yet to speak with the media in Miami this week. The player council is only part of the structure, said Djokovic. We are not part of the board or deciding anything that is voted on later on. We are in consultation in collaboration with our player board representatives. Board members are the ones voting on what they think is appropriate for the player's side. Federer and Nadal have been icons of our sport for so many years and their opinions are extremely important to everyone. If they want to be active and part of it, either officially or unofficially, I think it's only positive news for us, Djokovic will kick off his Miami Open campaign against either Bernard Tomic or Thiago Montero. Can the 20-time Grand Slam champion achieve something that no other player has been able to do so far this year?
Roger Federer, photo by Chrysler Kayo, copyright at Sport Vision. As a player who has spent 310 weeks as world number one, Roger Federer has dominated the men's tour during certain stages of his career. However, so far in 2019 it has been completely different for him and other members of the Big Four. Three months into the season and no player has yet to win multiple ATP titles. An unexpected start to the year. Federer is one of 19 players to have won titles this year. For him, his triumph was at the Dubai Tennis Championships, where the Swiss player clinched his 100th ATP trophy. Following in the footsteps of Jimmy Connors. There is a similar pattern on the women's tour with 13 WTA tournaments been won by different players. Amid the various winners, Federer believes that positives can be drawn from the unusual situation. Praising the emergence of the next group of rising stars on the tour. Definitely says something about how there is shifting going on, on both tours. That it's maybe harder to dominate. Or it's harder to keep on, sort of, having the same winners. Federer told reporters on Wednesday. And the young guys are really pushing through, which is a thing we've been looking at for some time now. It's just not easy winning tournaments, and it seems easier for them now, which is good. And it doesn't mean the other people are not as good. It's just that there is a shifting going on, 2019 ATP champions Qatar, Roberto Bautista Agut Brisbane, Kani Shikori Maharashtra, Kevin Anderson Sydney, Alex de Menor Auckland, Tennis Sandgren Australian Open, Novak Djokovic Montpelier, Joe Wilfred Zonga Sofia, Daniil Medvedev Cordoba, Juan Ignacio Londaro Rotterdam, Gael Monfils New York, Riley Opelka Buenos Aires, Marco Echenato Rio, Laszlo Di Jerry Marseille, Stefano Tsitsipas Del Rey Beach, Raiduel Bot Dubai, Roger Federer Rocca Polko, Nick Kyrgios Sao Paulo, Guido Pella Indian Wells, Dominic Team Federer will be hoping to break this trend at the Miami Open. It was at the tournament where he played his first main draw match at a Masters 1000 event back in 1999. Since then, he has gone on to win the Miami Crown three times with the most recent occurring in 2017. Despite being a veteran of the event, Federer finds himself in unfamiliar territory due to the relocation of the event to the Hard Rock Stadium. The same venue that will host the 2020 Super Bowl. We left an iconic venue in our sport, in Key Biscayne. Back in the day we had best of five set first round matches in Key Biscayne. It was a massive tournament, ATPTennis.com quoted Federer as saying, Say in a way I'm sad about that, but I'm really, really excited to be here now. It's like a new tournament, but at the same time it's nice to see innovation, it's nice to see growth in the game, and I hope that's exactly what's going to happen here. His final taste of competitive tennis in Key Biscayne was bittersweet. In 2018 the former world number one suffered a shock defeat to Fantasy Kokinakis in the second round. Nevertheless, Federer hopes to make up for that loss this time around. My focus has got to be doing better than last year, Federer said. I really have to make sure I do my utmost to get through that first match, and hopefully catch momentum. At the age of 37, it is unclear as to how many more years Miami will continue welcoming him to their tournament. Federer is currently the second oldest player in the top 100 after Ivo Kolovic 40. One incentive to keep him going is Connor's all-time title record of 109. Just nine trophies behind equaling the record, he is hoping to continue adding to his collection. I hope, a few more. I'm just very happy to be at 100 already. It's exciting to have won that many and to have gotten another chance in Indian Wells. It was a pity to lose to Dominic Team, but it's how it goes, so I just have to keep plugging away and hopefully give myself some opportunities. He said. The important thing is to be healthy, happy playing and that's exactly how I feel right now sitting here in Miami, granted a first round bye in Miami, Federer will start his campaign against either Matthew Ebden or Ryu Elbot. Tomas Burdick has had to withdraw from the Miami Open after suffering a back injury. 
Tomas Burdick at ADP underscore tour. Twitter, Tomas Burdick has suffered another injury setback after withdrawing from the Miami Open this week. The former Wimbledon finalist received a setback to his comeback after withdrawing from his first round match with Bernard Tomic due to a back injury. Had Burdick won his first round match he would have played Novak Djokovic in the second round but his latest injury setback means that potential matchup will not happen. Speaking on Twitter the Czech Republican explained that he needed time to recover from his back injury, not a good day in the office, unfortunately, I have had to pull out from my first round match. Burdick said, my back is not in the 100% conditions and I have to be careful with my decisions. Need time to recover and be strong again. After reaching the Doha final, Montpelier semi-finals and the fourth round at the Australian Open, this is an untimely setback for Burdick who was hoping to reach the heights of 2013 once again. As a result of his withdrawal Bernard Tomic will play a qualifier or lucky loser tomorrow in the first round. Tipsarevic's emotional return in early Miami Open results, Janko Tipsarevic made an emotional return to the ATP Tour with a 6-3, 6-3 win over Bradley Klon. The Serbian, who has had his injuries, broke the American four times to reach the second round at the new Miami venue. A match with Roberto Bautista got awaits for Tipsarevic next who will be eagerly awaiting the challenge. There were also wins for Argentinian duo Federico Del Bonas and Guido Andriotti as well as Roberto Carbosbena. Polanski suffered a three-set defeat to Andre Rublev in the qualifying round, but is the first lucky loser of the tournament, benefiting from fantasy Kokinaki's misfortune. Zimbio.com. The full draw for Australian Open is finally out with the places marked qualifiers, finally filled. At the time the draw was made the final round of qualifying had not been completed, therefore places were marked qualifiers until such players' identities could be determined. Q. Andre Rublev vs. Yen Hsun Lumalek Jaziri vs. Q. Gosoeta Q. Alexander Bublik vs. 16. Lucas Puy Thomas Burdick vs. Q. Luca Vanni Q. Bjorn Fratongelo vs. Q. Noah Rubin Q. Jurgen Melzer vs. 17. Roger Federer 26. Albert Ramos Vinolas vs. Q. Lucas Lacco Q. Thomas Fabiano vs. Donald Young Q. Francis Tiafo vs. Mikhail Kukushkin Yoshihito Nishioka vs. Q. Alex Bolt Daniel Medvedev vs. Q. Ernesto Escobedo Dimitri Tursinov vs. Q. Roddick Stepanek Q. Riley Opelka vs. 11. David Goffin Q. Blake Mott vs. 18. Richard Gasquet 30. Pablo Carena Busta vs. LL Peter Polanski Dennis Estoman vs. Q. Ivan Dodig Polanski has made the main draw despite losing to Andre Rublev in the qualifying round. Kikinakis was forced to withdraw following an abdominal injury, 